The expansion of Japanese territory during the Second World War was a hugely impressive operation. Apart from the ground and naval forces, perhaps one of the most important elements to this endeavour was in the air. Japanese aircraft were essential to cover the vast empire from the South Pacific to the borders of India. Having the ability to fly for long periods of time but also being able to land in the vast ocean was a huge boost. The biggest Japanese plane of the war, the Kawanishi H-8K flying boat, ticked these boxes. Many considered this aircraft to be the best in its class throughout the war. In today's video, we look at Japan's biggest plane and why it performed so well during World War II. If you enjoy this video and want to see more, hit that subscribe button. It's free and really helps the channel reach more history lovers like you. Aircraft with the ability to land and take off from water wasn't a new concept for the Japanese. They had many smaller single piloted planes to do this, but something on a larger scale was needed. Initially, the sister of the H-8K, the Kawanishi H-6K, was created for this job. But by 1938, when the H-8K was ordered, a larger, more armoured and versatile aircraft was needed. The H-8K flying boat, which the Allies nicknamed Emily, was an all-metal construction. With a length of 92 feet or 28 metres, it sat at a huge height of 30 feet or 9 metres. A fully loaded plane tipped the scales at 54,000 pounds or 24,000 kilos. The huge cantilever wings housed four 1800 horsepower Mitsubishi engines. These gave the flying boat a top speed of 290 miles or 465 kilometers an hour. The range was the impressive part, being able to reach 4,400 miles or 7,100 kilometers. This range was due to their there being eight small fuel tanks in the wings and six larger ones in the hull. By January of 1941, the first of 167 aircraft were flying. They would see various roles including general patrol, reconnaissance, large transport and even bombing missions. They were particularly effective in hunting Allied submarines, as the later versions carried an air-to-surface vessel radar system. The ability to carry numerous depth charges allowed it to attack multiple submarines, or have several runs at a single sub. The transport aspect of the aircraft was also very good, as its size meant it could transport up to 64 fully equipped soldiers, making it perfect for raiding commando missions. Another great aspect of the plane was its offensive armament. It had five 20mm cannons spread across the nose, belly and rear, as well as five 7.7mm machine guns across the other areas, leaving it completely protected. A crew of 10 men were required to fly and operate her, depending on what role the aircraft was taking. The bombing role meant it could carry up to 16 large bombs or even torpedoes. The flying boat performed extremely well in all its roles throughout the war. It was synonymous with Allied pilots as being the most difficult of all Japanese aircraft to shoot down. This comes down to its sheer size, with thick armour and innate ability to take heavy damage and still fly. It saw action across the Pacific and performed numerous rescue missions to locate down Japanese pilots and crew at sea. Despite these aircraft doing so well in the war, they still couldn't handle the overwhelming might of the Allied war effort. Of the 167 manufactured, only four examples survived the war. Many were either destroyed while moored in the water or attacked by several Allied aircraft at once. One surviving aircraft would be assessed by the US military and helped advance their own future aircraft in that role. Although it's a Japanese plane which doesn't get as much attention as, say, the Mitsubishi Zero, it still played a vital role in the Japanese war effort of the Second World War. What did you think about the Japanese H-8K of World War II? Were you aware of the aircraft prior to the video? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to expand your knowledge and join the growing Premier History community.